What up, party people? Matt Lehman, the owner of SpatulaCityRecords.com. How are we doing? First of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for everybody that has joined and people that have waited for, I don't know, when the last time I put a video out. It's been a couple months, I think. Uh, I appreciate your patience. I kind of lost focus on where I wanted this channel to go and what I wanted to do. And I also moved. I closed down the brick and mortar in La Quinta, California and moved to the mountains of Arizona. Uh, we're at 4,500 elevation, although it is 102 today, which is still hotter than I wanted, but it beats 116 today in La Quinta for sure. But anyway, I didn't know where I wanted this channel to go because originally when I started it, I wanted it to be about cleaning records and fixing records and doing all of the stuff that people should learn about or could, if they're going to take care of records, how to do it. And not to get ripped off by products that are charging way too much for something that isn't worth worth it. Um, and I don't want to be the guy that comes out and pulls out really expensive records and says, look what I have or this or that and the other. Uh, I may start doing some of the videos uh, of what's going up on the website. If you don't follow my Instagram or you don't get my email blasts, I highly recommend signing up for them. Just go on the website, put your email in. I only put one email out a week and that's usually on Friday and I kind of say, hey, this is what's coming in tomorrow because I put new records out on Saturday and Wednesday and so you can get a feel for what's coming in the website. Um, but I have a couple other things. I have a couple more cleaning products I'm going to test coming up. Um, and the reason I'm doing this video is yesterday on my Instagram, I posted um, something I thought was funny. There was a, there was an auction on shopgoodwill.com. Uh, it's Goodwill's uh, resale online store. And it's an auction house just like eBay. They used to, I used to buy a lot of records from them. They, were, they used to get some really good stuff in and the pricing was fair on it. But now it's just astronomically overpriced. I don't even know where, who, who's buying this stuff and paying this. I mean, they're paying three and four times retail for them. Uh, but so yesterday they had an auction and it had 30 or 35 records in it and it ended for $1,300. And the reason being it was $1,300 is because on the, f the first three records they showed were what appeared to be white label promos of Neil Young's Harvest, white label promo of Led Zeppelin 2 and a white label promo of Led Zeppelin 4. Now I say, uh, it, it appears that they were white label promos because they didn't show the actual label. So it could have just been a jacket with the promo sticker on it. Uh, it could have been the wrong record. It could have been trashed. Uh, so whoever paid $1,300, I hope that they got a good deal. I, I, well, I, I hope they got a good record. I don't think they got a good deal, but I hope they got a good clean record. And so I had a bunch of people ask me why those were going so expensive and what is a white label promo, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to kind of explain that. So first of all, if you go on my website, if you go on eBay, if you go anywhere, you may find uh, people put WLP or promo, white label promo. WLP stands for white label promo. What is a white label promo? Let's discuss. Turns out I actually have one of those promo copies of Led Zeppelin 4 from the, that they were selling on 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 uh, Shop Goodwill. So there you go, I get to point out a really expensive record I have. Yay, go for me, I'm awesome. Uh, so what is a white label promo? First of all, this is a Led Zeppelin IV record. This is the regular label. See how it's red and green with a white stripe? That's a typical label, you see that all the time. This is a white label promo. See, white label promo, hence the name white label promo, it's white label. Why is it white labeled and how, do, what is it? So it's a promo copy, promo. They sometimes will have a track list on the bottom. I don't think the Led Zeppelin 4 ever did where it, it, it's for radio stations. It has every song on here and it tells them the timing and the intro on it. So that way DJs could know what, what they had and how long, how long the song played. Uh, what is a white label promo? So a white label promo was designed because they don't do this anymore because there's no real need for it. So back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even into the 80s, uh, the only real place to get your music was either from a record store or to steal it from your friends. Uh, and so radio stations would hype their bands before you could buy them and they'd play them on the radio. Like for example, this Led Zeppelin 4, they probably played Black Dog on the radio, maybe, maybe Battle of Evermore. When the levee breaks, I don't know if they released that on the radio. Anyway, so they would play it on the radio, and then you'd be like, "Oh, that's a great song. Let's go pick it up." And you'd go to the you'd go to the record store and say, "Hey, I want that new Led Zeppelin record." And they say, "Well, it comes out next week." And they're like, "Damn!" But they hyped it, and that's how they got you to buy records, and that's how you knew about music. The only way to hear about music was from radio stations or from your friends or 
or whatever. I think that's probably it, really. There's no internet, there was no anything else. So, so what is a white label promo? Well, when they pressed records, 99% of the time, there's always gonna be someone that's gonna come on and say, well, not all white label promos are the first ones off the line. Generally true. Uh, white label promos, so when they press records, they have a stamper that has the record into the metal stamper disc. And they press it, and then they move on, they press another one, they press on. Well, the mother stamper, which is the first one, is generally only used to stamp out other, are they called mother stampers? I think so. So they'll stamp, so for example, if they're pressing a million copies of this, they're going to need several stampers because they degrade over time. So the mother stamper will stamp out all these and then the mother one goes back into a secret hidey hole where it's super protected. And then if they need to press more of them, they'll pull that back out and press more or they'll reissue it with a different stamper. So each one, each time that mother stamper makes another stamper, it degrades a little bit. So by the time you get to the millionth copy, the theory is, that that record will sound much worse than the record that was pressed first. Uh, I personally believe that you would really have to have an amazing turntable and system set up in order to notice the difference between first and the millionth press. Now I know I'm gonna hit, get heat for that. I'm sure there are certain records that you can tell the difference on and, but generally speaking, they did a pretty good job of mastering them unless they were pretty crappy. But the reason a white label promo is worth so much is because it's the only way to truly tell that a record is first pressed or has been pressed early. Um, and you know that that is as close to the master press as you're going to get. And you know that your copy was one of the first thousand, maybe, I don't know, two, maybe 5,000 at the most, I would assume. Uh, copies ever pressed and it's not like this this Led Zeppelin is a first but this could have been the millionth one on the line this could have been five millionth or a hundred thousand like if if each stamper is will press out about a hundred thousand records variably obviously sometimes it's ten thousand depending on whatever but let's say it's a hundred thousand for argument's sake this could very easily be the hundred thousandth copy that was pressed and then they threw that stamper out this one is guaranteed to be within the first 5,000 or however many promo copies there are of it. Um, so you know that this is going to be better. It's going to sound better than the other ones. Uh, you'll have to discuss that amongst yourself, whether you believe that or not. But that's why white label promos are most expensive. Now, also in that lot, they had a LZ2 or Led Zeppelin 2 promo copy. And that's pretty interesting because that that has that has some pull. Uh, and here's why. So Led Zeppelin 2 white label promo is going to be a Robert Ludwig hot mix press for sure. And it's also going to be a very early Robert Ludwig hot mix press. And it's going to be a double RL side. I just threw a lot of information at you because I wanted to sound really cool. Let's break that down. What is the LZ2 hot mix? When Led Zeppelin 2... Uh, so I have... so. First of all, I have five copies of Led Zeppelin II. Um, I think three of these are hot mixes, and they vary in degrees, and I'll tell you why. Uh, two of them are not. First of all, what is a hot mix? So when Led Zeppelin II was first pressed, uh, first first recorded and pressed, manager of Led Zeppelin, I can't think of his name, look it up, do whatever you want, went to Robert Ludwig, who's the guy that mastered this record. If you look at your record, Dead Wax, and you don't know Dead Wax, but if you see an RL, that's Robert Ludwig. You'll also see Sterling stamped. That is... Robert Sterling? I can't remember his first name. Those two guys are are the gods of, of mastering records. Um, I think Ludwig, you can still get him to master your record, but it's something like $100,000 a minute to have him master it. Um, that's how good he is. But if you look at your records, almost everything was mastered by Ludwig or or uh, Sterling. So you see their initials on everything. So so anyway, the manager went to, to Sterling and said, look, or I'm sorry, went to Ludwig and said, look, I want this to be the rockinest record you have ever mastered. I want this thing to be so much bass that I want you to put so much bass in it that you're like, this is too much bass. And then I want you to put more bass on top of that. He's like, I want this thing to sound like a rock concert in your house. I want this thing to just crush it. Ludwig said, okay, great, not a problem. Did it, pressed it, plant, uh, went out to the public, and all of a sudden a lot of these uh, copies started coming back, and people were saying they were skipping. And here's the problem with it. 
was that people that had shitty turntables, and uh, as an example, and I'm, I'm not knocking or beating up on Crosley or Victrola, they have uh, little suitcase turntables or they have turntables that have an all-in-one kind of system. Those are the bottom of the barrel as far as turntables go. It doesn't mean they're bad turntables, they're just entry level, they're beginning turntables. People that had those and had crappy turntables or turntables where they had their speakers next to them, what was happening is there was so much bass in this record that the ones that had the speakers attached to them and people would turn them up, because it's Led Zeppelin, if you're gonna listen to Led Zeppelin, you're gonna listen to it loud, there was so much bass in it that the speakers were causing the needle to actually jump and cause the record to skip. I don't. I think it took them a while to figure out what was going on or maybe they knew what it was right away, but anyway, so they pulled all the records, remastered it with way less bass, and that's what you generally hear when you buy Led Zeppelin II. As far as I know, the hot mix was never remastered on any ever again. The only way to get a hot mix is if you have a first press Robert Ludwig press. Um, and I can guarantee you I am not one of those guys that's like well I like this one because I like this version because it's I'm not even a mono stereo guy I don't even care mono or stereo so I'm not that guy that's into all that stuff but the first time I heard and I was when I saw this because this thing this Led Zeppelin can sell for anywhere from $300 on up and depending if it's a good good condition first time I heard it I was like this is going to be so stupid this is going to be one of those things that audio files just I have to have it because it's a hot mix first thing I turned it on heard three bars of what is it whole lot of uh rosie whole lot of loving what's the first track whole, whole lot of love first three or four bars a whole lot of love i was like holy crap i can't believe this and i listened to that whole record and it wasn't my copy someone had actually brought it into the shop because he he was pretty slick he bought it on ebay dirt cheap because it had a scratch on it and it skipped on the last track and before he bought it, he brought it to me and said, hey, can you fix the scratch on this if I buy it? I said, I don't know. I'll give it a try. I said, usually I can fix it. And so he brought it to me. He bought it dirt cheap. He brought it to me. I fixed it, and it played perfectly. It didn't even tick. didn't have any background noise. So he got a really clean copy after I was done with it. But so I got, I told him, I said, there's only one issue. I said, what, I said, I'll fix it for you, but I want to hear it. Cause I'd never seen one come through the shop. It was just early on in my record store days. I want to hear it. He's like, of course I want you to play it. I think you're going to love it. So I played it and I was blown away. And so I went back to my shitty later copy and tried to play it. I couldn't, I ended up selling it because I was like, I can't listen to this record if it's not a hot mix. And then fortunately for me about, uh, it wasn't very long ago, uh, gray, gray coffee found a couple and they gave me their their copy, which was pretty beat up, but they didn't even know it existed. And because I told them they went through their collection and they had like three copies of it in their collection, but they gave me one. So I, I had one and I won't listen to the earlier presses uh, or the later presses. I will only listen to the hot mix because it's such a much better record. I, I highly recommend picking one up or at least listening to it if you can. I can't play it here for you. You're not gonna notice any difference if I play it on through a phone. But So let's go through how you can tell if you have a hot mix. First and foremost, um, there is absolutely nothing on a jacket. There's nothing different about the jacket that will tell you it's a hot mix. There are a couple things that will tell you that it is not a hot mix, and I'll go through those right now. First and foremost, the matrix or the uh, uh, inventory number or whatever you want to call it. Um, on the hot mix, it's, it's always SD8236. There are later presses in the 70s. Uh, Atlantic changed their inventory numbers, and they went to a five-digit number. So I think it's sd 19275 or 725 or something like that. So if it has five digits on the on the bottom, it is most likely not a hot mix. And I say most likely because a lot of times these records were swapped out. For example, this one, and the other reason you can tell that, uh, that tell it it's most likely not going to be a hot mix is if it, excuse me, if it has this gold record award on the top, because you don't put a gold record award when a record is first pressed because it hasn't sold a million copies or whatever gold record. So if it has that, that means it's a much, probably most likely a much later press. Um, but I say most likely because this one was actually a hot mix um, and it was in the wrong jacket or it was in a later jacket. And I, when I saw it, I was like, eh, it's not a hot mix. And then I pulled it out and looked at it. I was like, holy shit, it actually is a hot mix. Um, so I just switched. I happened to have an earlier jacket, so I swapped them out. So it, it's this it's this exact same jacket. That's what you're looking for. Like this is, this. This to me would get me excited because I say, okay, there's no gold stamp or anything. It's a four digit. It could be a hot mix. Maybe we'll see. So you can't tell anything on the jacket. So let's go deeper into the record itself. I need something for this one. Okay. 
first, if you look at This is not a hot mix either. Hang on. I gotta find my hot mixes. <clears throat> there she be. R I T R. There she is. I'm gonna put my fingers on these, but I have an ultrasonic cleaner, so no, no worries. If you look at the dead wax on these. The dead wax is the part of the record that has no, no information, or it just has matrix numbers and stuff like that. If you look at the, the dead wax on side two, this is not a hot mix. If you notice, the dead wax is about an inch and a half. On the hot mix, it's only about an inch. I don't know if you can see that. That dead wax up towards the label, okay? So let me see if I can do these side by side. Notice that this one has a has much more dead wax. This one has much less dead wax. Reason for that is because a record that has more bass in it requires more space on a record. Bass takes up space on the grooves. So that is also why most rap records or records that have heavy bass in them tend to be double records as opposed to single records because there's so much bass they need more space on the record so they have to use double records. So that's a first indicator. Uh, it's 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 interesting to to check that, um, and that's that's the first way to tell. But the real real way to tell, I'm gonna have to get up to do this. Let me find it first before I get up. So this one's only RL on one side, and I'll get to that in a minute. So if you look at this, okay, right here where my finger is. Let me see if I can. There it is. Okay, see that? See the initials RL. Great. The only hot mixes that are true, the only hot mixes, if it's a hot mix, it'll have RL initials on it. That's Robert Ludwig. He's, he's, he mastered that version of it and that's it. So his initials are not on any other ones that I'm aware of. Now he may have done some reissues in the last five or 10 years. I don't know if they did or not, but as far as the first presses go, if it has RL on it, it's most likely a hot mix. I say most likely because people are screwing around now and they're etching RL in the, in the dead wax. So you kind of got to look for everything. You got to make sure that same thing on this one. If this says, if the number on it says SD19, whatever it is, 275, then it cannot be. It was never issued as a hot mix by that. So if you see one that says SD with five numbers and it has RL in it, someone's screwing around with you and don't buy that record. Um, if it's the right number, SD8236, and it has RL in it, I would check the dead wax for sure. I'd also ask to play it because again, people are screwing around with that stuff and it's cl it's super clean. The, the ones that I've seen that are counterfeit, the RL is uh, the, the the true hot mixes. The RL is very sharp. It's very, if, if you know how he signs things, then you know his signature or her, his RL. And the ones that I'm seeing are real crappy. It looks like somebody did it with a hot needle or something and they're not, they're not very clean uh, as it would be after the fact. So, those are your ways to tell it's an RL. Now, now where things get a little bit tricky, there are actually two different versions of the hot mix, and I actually have both of them, but it's irrelevant for me to show them to you. But So on some of them, you will only get RL on side two, and on the first, the actual first first, or the closest to the original, or the original presses are, have RL on both sides. Um, and that means that both sides are actually the hot mix. Um, I believe, 100% on this, I should have done some research before I did it, but the RL on one side means that only the second side is a hot mix. Um, so the first side doesn't have the as much bass uh, as the original one. Uh, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'm pretty sure that's what that means. Still highly sought after side two is also an amazing side, or a brilliant record was on side two. Uh, heartbeat, living, loving, made, ramble on Moby Dick bring it on home um, so that's it that's why that auction went so high so always look out for white label promos for that reason um, and I don't I don't know that I've seen I've never seen a white label promo on Led Zeppelin 2 uh, I have seen a white label promo on Led Zeppelin 4 obviously I've seen it on 1 and I have not seen it on 3 um, but Led Zeppelin 2 
white mix or white label promo hot mix that's that's pretty cool um very very cool i don't think it's 1300 dollars cool but it's cool but anyway that's all i got for you today uh, like i said i'll try to do more videos coming down the coming down the line but again thank you so much for hanging out welcome to all the new people this is i'll take you to it real fast this is spatula city records 2.0 um 1.0 was the shop in boxes but now there's all sorts of stuff. This is, this is, I posted in my other video. Those are all of my records without jaggeds. Those are all my Phil Collins. Uh, ultrasonic, I've got one more ultrasonic coming. There's another ultrasonic. There's my drawing racks and there's that. These are just records I'm working on right now. I have a really cool uh, media music. That's a 10 record set is what I have. It's a uh, music bed soundtrack. DJs love that shit. But there you go. Spatula City. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. SpatulaCityRecords.com. There's my workstation, my boxes. Thank you so much. I appreciate. I appreciate everybody watching. Take care. Bye. Remember. Oh, hey, before I forget, remember Spatula City Records. Buy all your records. Buy nine, get one free. Ultrasonically cleaned. Everything's ultrasonically cleaned and free shipping on orders of $50 or more. I do occasionally bring in. Um, sealed reissues from a source and i have some i just posted these the other day I, I just posted these on there today so i've got paul's boutique i've got shot at the devil and a bunch of other on there so i just posted those put those on today which is wednesday june 16th later